Hi guys, this is Daryl and welcome back to Book Odyssey. Every now and then you might read a book, obviously sci-fi, that has a particularly fascinating concept that simply blows your mind. A rare occurrence, however, might be that you read a book that offers a possible answer to a well-known paradox, still resulting in said mind being blown. Rarer still is that that possible solution chills you to the very core. Enter the Dark Forest by Liu Cixin. Just so you guys know, this video will focus on concepts and topics from both the Dark Forest and the Three Body Problem, so will contain some spoilers, but I will keep these to a minimum. Do you know what the greatest expression of regard for a race or civilization is? No, what? Annihilation. That's the highest respect a civilization can receive. They would only feel threatened by a civilization they truly respect. The Dark Forest is a 2008 science fiction novel by Chinese writer Liu Cixin and is the sequel to the Hugo Award winning novel The Three Body Problem in the Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy. The English version translated by Joel Martinson was published in 2015. The events pick up from where The Three Body Problem leaves off. Earth is struggling to come to terms with the revelation of a coming alien invasion that will arrive in the solar system four centuries in the future. As a result, the UN forms the Planetary Defence Council to coordinate defensive efforts against the impending assault of the Trisolarans. However, subatomic semi-artificial intelligences sent from Trisolaris, known as Sophons, have already reached Earth. These conduct surveillance of national secrets and private conversations and disrupt the operation of particle accelerators in order to obstruct any new discoveries in fundamental physics until the fleet arrives. This means that the Earth's defence plans are instantly exposed to the enemy. Only the human mind remains a secret, a place where the Sophons cannot penetrate. From this is born the Wallfacer Project, a plan that grants four people access to enormous resources so that they might design secret strategies hidden through deceit and misdirection from Earth and Trisolaris alike, with an aim of making sure that humanity survives the coming war. Three of the Wallfacers are influential statesmen and scientists, but the fourth is a total unknown, Lo Ji, an unambitious Chinese astronomer and sociologist is baffled by his new status. All he knows is that he's the one wolf facer that Trisolaris wants dead. The events in the Dark Forest trip forward in time thanks to stasis technology until 400 years pass and the Trisolarans arrive at the door of the solar system. In this time, humanity has changed, having advanced considerably. But will these advancements be enough and will the wolf facer project succeed in saving them? It's through the axioms of cosmic sociology that Lo Ji comes to form the Dark Forest theory. But before we get into that, it's important to understand the Fermi Paradox and why it's important. The well-known Fermi Paradox is the conflict between the absence of evidence for intelligent extraterrestrial life and the high probability of their existence. In 1950, while working at Los Alamos National Laboratory, physicist Enrico Fermi famously exclaimed to his colleagues over lunch, Where is everybody? He had been thinking about the startling lack of evidence of other life beyond our own planet. In the universe some 14 billion years old, during which more than a billion trillion stars have been created, Fermi reasoned there simply must be other intelligent civilizations out there. So where are they? Thus the Fermi paradox was born. If the universe is so big and there are so many stars, planets, solar systems and galaxies, if intelligent life existed out there, which probability suggests it would, wouldn't we know about it by now? There are billions of stars in the Milky Way, similar to the Sun. Of those, there's a high probability some of these stars will have Earth-like planets in a circumstellar habitable zone. Many of these stars, and hence their planets, are much older than the Sun. If the Earth is typical, some may have developed intelligent life long ago. Some of these civilizations may have developed interstellar travel. Even at the slow pace of currently envisioned interstellar travel, the Milky Way galaxy could be completely traversed in a few million years. Since many of the stars similar to the Sun are billions of years older, Earth should have already been visited by extraterrestrial civilizations, or at least their probes. 
However, there is no convincing evidence that this has ever happened. There have been numerous efforts to explain the Fermi paradox, but it is arguably only strengthened with time. The acceleration of human technological advancement in such a short amount of time leads to the reasoning that surely there would have been ample opportunity in our 14 billion year old universe for other civilizations to have progressed to a similar level and far beyond. And even if entire civilizations have been born, lived and died out in this time, surely there would be some lingering radio signals or clues of their expansion. Some explanations that intelligent extraterrestrial beings are extremely rare, that the lifetime of such civilizations is relatively short, or that they do exist, but for various reasons humans see no evidence. Some suggest that at universe time and space scales, two intelligent civilizations would be unlikely to ever meet, even if many developed during the life of the universe. The dark forest theory, however, has a more terrifying answer. Let's start with the axioms of cosmic sociology, which were the driving components behind the character Logie's theory. These axioms are, number one, survival is the primary need of civilization, and two, civilization continues to grow and expand, but the total matter in the universe remains constant. Breaking this down, you can attribute the first axiom to basically being survival of the fittest. A civilization, as most people on an individual level, will do anything and everything they can to survive because this is a primary instinctual driver. The second axiom essentially suggests that in order to survive or expand, cosmic civilizations are in competition for one another over a finite amount of resources that exist in the universe. We can see this on a human level throughout history, but when you think of it on a galactic scale, it might seem a little more inconceivable. The universe is huge, right? But when you think that the vast expanse of space is actually empty and the usable resources within it are in fact limited, it becomes a little more feasible. Side note, an exception to this would be if a civilization has discovered a way to harness dark energy, an unknown form of energy that affects the universe on the largest scales. After we apply the axioms of cosmic sociology, which seem reasonable on a human level, to a truly universal scale, the character Logie inserts two assertions, what he calls chain of suspicion and technological explosion. If we take a chain of suspicion, let's suppose that all the extraterrestrial civilizations that exist can be grouped into two categories, benevolent and malevolent. Malevolent civilizations are warmongers and will attack other civilizations at will. Benevolent civilizations are not warmongers and will not needlessly attack other civilizations unless they feel threatened. Imagine you are a benevolent civilization with no will to harm or conquer or kill. You've recently encountered an alien civilization and are considering whether to attack. If you find that the alien civilization is malevolent, it would be prudent to attack and destroy them before they do the same to you. However, if they are benevolent, great, right? Well, it's not that simple. You also have to consider whether they think you are benevolent. If they think you're malevolent, they are likely to attack you on the basis of the same logic that you applied before, and so you must destroy them to protect yourself. This is the chain of suspicion and it can be extended infinitely. So either your decision ends at yes, in which case you attack and destroy the civilization you've encountered, or you enter an endless chain of suspicion with the other civilization that is bound to end in yes for either them or you. So, the chilling truth is that, in the end, the only real chance of survival you have when two alien civilizations are aware of one another's existence is to destroy the other before they destroy you. You might think, well, that's a bit simplistic. Surely there's nuance. Surely the two civilizations could just talk, hold peace agreements like civilizations on Earth do. Possibly. But there are a couple of factors to consider when taking the distance of space and the communication lag into account. On Earth communication is both easier and faster, meaning any kind of misunderstanding or miscommunication can be easily resolved. In space, however, communication may take years depending on the distance between civilizations. In addition, due to the cultural differences, it would be difficult to communicate intentions clearly, even with a common language. This makes chain of suspicion a huge barrier in interstellar communication. The second of Logie's assertions is the technological explosion. 
Imagine that you find out that the newly encountered alien civilization is malevolent and that they must be destroyed. You also find out that they're technologically vastly inferior compared to you. You could destroy them easily and think nothing of it. However, their world is at an almost immeasurable distance away, and it would take you, let's say for instance, nearly 200 years to reach it. You have stasis technology to ensure your survival through the trip, but the problem is that there's a chance that, when you reach the civilization 200 years later, they may very well have developed weapons that can outgun everything you brought on the trip two centuries earlier. It's conceivable for a civilization to experience an era of rapid technological advancement. Think about how far humanity has progressed technologically in as little as 50 to 100 years. So, based on these two assertions, chain of suspicion and technological explosion, you can't let them live because they might decide to destroy you, but you also can't attack them openly in case it drives a technological explosion. So what's the solution? The dark forest theory. According to Loji's theory, the universe is a dark forest. Every civilization is an armed hunter stalking through the trees like a ghost gently pushing aside branches that block the path and trying to tread without sound. Even breathing is done with care. The hunter has to be careful, because everywhere in the forest are stealthy hunters like him. If he finds another life, another hunter, an angel or a demon, a delicate infant or a tottering old man, a fairy or a demigod, there's only one thing he can do, open fire and eliminate them. In this forest, hell is other people, an eternal threat that any life exposes its own existence will be swiftly wiped out. This is the picture of cosmic civilization. It's the explanation for the Fermi Paradox. The Fermi Paradox is the conflict between the high probability of existence of extraterrestrials and the lack of evidence pointing towards their existence. While many have supposed solutions to the paradox, the Dark Forest Theory is a truly terrifying solution. It suggests every alien civilization is either purposefully keeping silent or quietly eradicating alien civilizations that it learns about without ever letting their presence be known. Perhaps Arthur C. Clarke was right when he said, two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying.